y'all. I'm Kat, and thanks for tuning in to Crosspoint Church Online. So we've got an incredible time of worship, a profound teaching, and I really miss talking with you guys. So please comment below so we can interact and like and share so we can reach more people for Jesus. Now let's get ready for a time of worship. Well, good morning, Crosspoint Online. It is so good to be here with you today. We're in our God's Promises series, and our opening scripture is 2 Peter 1.4. And it says, and because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. And so mm -hmm. we're going to sing and shout a, a praise to the Lord today. And this song is a song about God's promises. And so I want to open us in prayer before we start. Father God, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for this opportunity that whether we're together physically or, or, or uh, across the internet, wherever people are tuning in from God, that you are present and that you are here and that you bring us together across any, any channel, Father. And we thank you for that. And God, I pray that as we look to your promises today, that we would be encouraged, we'd be blessed and lifted up and uh, that we would know your gospel truth. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. If you're in your house right now, say amen. Amen. I'm not gonna wait, wait for the walls to fall. Cause I know when they will bring them down I got a praise walking within my soul I'm not ashamed to declare it now Light of the world trample the darkness nothing can stop it you are the God of the Light of the world. Light of the world. Trample the darkness. Nothing can stop it. You are the God of the promise. Every word will be accomplished. Nothing can stop it. You are the God of the promise.
thank you, God. We know that we can put all of our hope and all of our trust in you and you alone, God. And so I pray today, as we come before you in your presence, Lord, that we would be willing to just be available to receive from you, God. Because we know that whatever comes from your hand is good. And we know that in your promises are yes and amen, Lord. We know that every word that you've put forth will be accomplished, God, because it is your word that creates and sustains life. It's your word that created the galaxies and the heavens, and it's at your word that the darkness flees and the devil trembles. And so we just place our hands and our lives and our hearts in yours, God. Help us to rest under the shadow of your wings today. We give you all glory, all honor, and all the praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for Cross Point Online. We're so glad you tuned in today. Just want to tell you about our services coming up next week and the week after. Next week, we're going back to our drive in services, and they will be at 9 o'clock the next two Sundays. That's the 26th and August 2nd. So they will not be Saturday night, but we're going to have it Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. Come stay in your car, be safe, and we're going to have the same service, worship, and message outside in our parking lot. And then at 11 o'clock over the next two Sundays, we're going to have our online service here. So tune in at 11 o'clock for our online services. And also, we have uh, an exciting children's vacation Bible school coming up August 4th through 9th. Judah and his team are putting together an exciting online curriculum. And so uh, families, boys and girls, tune in for that August 4th through 7th. And then remember, we're still doing our offering, special offering for our air conditioning in our activities building. So remember that in your giving. So now let's look to the Lord in our offering. God has promised that he will supply every need of ours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And so let's pray and ask God to take this offering and use it for his kingdom and for his glory. Father, we thank you today that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. We thank you, Lord, that and acknowledge that everything we give really comes from your hand. And we're only giving back to you what you have given to us. And so as we give this offering, we thank you, Lord, that you will use it to be a blessing as we have opportunity to be a blessing to others. And we thank you, Lord, that we have been blessed to be a blessing. We pray also this morning for our nation. We pray for unity in our nation, that you would cause the love of God to be released over our great country and that we could come together. We pray for every one of our soldiers, whether they're serving here or abroad throughout the world, you'd protect them and their families. And we pray for our leaders, our president, our Congress, our uh, governors, our mayors, and all those who make decisions, particularly during this difficult time of the uh, pandemic that you would give them great wisdom to know how to go about keeping us safe, but also keeping our economy going. We also pray, Father, for you to cause your powerful hand
to be released and to stop the spread of this virus. And we pray that in the authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you for all these things. And we pray together in the name that you called us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Remember, you can give also online. Go to crosspointelpaso.com slash give. And now for our kids, we have a special kids feature. So check this out. Have you heard of the one called Savior? Have you heard of his perfect love? Have you heard of the one in the CJ's trying to fix it. <laughs> hey CJ. Mr. Judah, yeah? I'm scared. Why are you scared? Be because I'm all alone. Where's your family? Well, my dad is at work. Mm -hmm. And my mom is getting me food to eat. Oh, okay. And my brother, I don't know what my brother is. Oh, okay. But I'm scared. Well, CJ, you don't have to be scared. I don't? No, you received Jesus, remember? Yeah, I remember that. Well, he said he'd never leave or forsake you. He'll never leave me? Nope, he'll never leave you. So, I'm not really alone? No, you're not. But let's pray, okay? Okay. All right, Father, I pray for CJ, and I just thank you that CJ has peace and that he knows that he's not alone. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I don't have to be scared anymore? No, you don't. That's good. Mm-hmm. All right, CJ, I'm going to go now. I'm going to go play now. Oh. Bye. Okay, good idea. Bye, CJ. Kids, remember, if you feel alone and scared, all you have to do is pray and speak God's word, and you'll realize you're not alone. We'll see you next time. Bye. Well, good morning, Crosspoint Church. We're so excited to be here with you this morning online. And then I've got the team here. Yeah, let's give it up, team. And wherever you are, I just want to, I know this is going to be goofy, but just clap in your house and give it up for our music team, our tech team, everybody who's here this morning. Um, there's a, a real skeleton crew here at the church, and they're just putting it together with, uh, with uh, limited personnel. So big thanks to everybody who's here this morning putting this service together. And thank you for tuning in and joining us for worship this morning. I know it's not ideal. I know we'd rather be in person, but... Um, but we can still worship together today, and, uh, and I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for this opportunity. I'm thankful that you are here with us as we continue today in our God's Promises series. And, uh, you know, we said this when we started out, but this is meant to be a source of encouragement. I think there's a lot of people who are kind of just walking through life right now, not really sure what's going on. You know, there's, some, uh, there's, there's a lot of challenges we're facing. COVID-19 presents all kinds of unique things that we haven't experienced before. And I think it's a great time for us to focus in on what God has promised us. And so last week, Carrie had a great message. And he talked about the promise of suffering, <laughs> which is kind of maybe a little counterintuitive, but I just, I was so blessed by what he had to say. I think God really spoke through the word last week um, because it's often in our suffering where God draws us closer to him. And he so wonderfully taught that there is purpose in our suffering. And so today I want to build on that thought. Because I think maybe some people, maybe, maybe we're a little stuck right now. Maybe we're a little stuck in the mud. Maybe we feel like we're stuck in that place of suffering. So today I want to build on that and talk about when you are in the storm, when you are in the trials, when you are facing suffering, you are not alone. You are never alone. No matter what you face in life, you are not alone. 
alone. Let's pray together as we begin. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for the promises of your word. We thank you that we can trust in the goodness of your promises, that we know that they are good and that they are true, that you are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. You are not caught off guard by this coronavirus, but you are walking through this with us, Father. And so we thank you for that, and we thank you for your promises. And Lord, I pray that you would bless each and every person, each and every individual who comes across this message, whether it's today, whether it's 10 days from now, whether it's a year from now, Father, I pray that you would fill them with with your Holy Spirit, through your word. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, if you want to take your Bibles out, we are going to be in Deuteronomy chapter 30. And uh, this, is, this is where we're going to start today. Um, we're going to be text heavy today. We're going to go through uh, several different scriptures, but it's good. It's good. God's word is, is, uh, is way more impactful than anything I could make up. So we're going to spend our time uh, bouncing through his word today. But we're going to begin at Deut- Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 7 and 8. And it says, Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him, In the presence of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you must go with this people into the land the Lord swore to their ancestors to give them, and you must divide it among them as their inheritance. The Lord goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. And do not be discouraged. This text represents the passing of the baton. What's happening here is Moses is, is, is entrusting this ministry now with Joshua as the Lord commanded him to do. And the baton is being passed. But one of the incredible things about this text is in this very chapter, Moses was just told that he will not cross into the promised land. Moses' ministry has been a tough one, and Kerry talked about this. You know, I don't know if too many people, he said, I love the way he said it, I don't know if too many people are lining up for Moses' ministry. You know, it begins on this high note. He leads the people out of Egypt, and there's this, this just incredible move of God as the Red Sea parts and, and, and the people of Israel are led out of slavery, and what a, what a high that must have been. What an incredible moment to begin this ministry And that's where the problems begin. See, it starts in this miraculous way, and people are excited. They're glad to be out of this uh, this place of slavery. Yet as time goes by, they begin to wander the desert. And what happens? People begin to grumble. They start to get impatient. They complain. They doubt. Moses begins to doubt. He doubts himself. He believes maybe God made a mistake in choosing him for this ministry. Moses and the people of Israel, they're going to face warring tribes in the desert, disputes of all kinds among the people. There's the hostilities of the desert environment, creatures of all kind that are deadly and poisonous. It's a hostile environment. He'll face rebellion. He faces opposition. And all this for 40 years. And then God says, you won't lead them into the promised land. Oh. What a gut punch that must have been. I can't even imagine that. But now today, I want you to put yourself in Joshua's shoes. Because in this text, Moses is telling and declaring to all of Israel that Joshua is going to take over essentially, right? And I just can't help but thinking, if I'm Joshua in this moment, I'm looking at, I'm looking at the picture here and I'm saying, okay, Look at all this stuff that has happened to Moses. It's been a rough go. It really has. And now I'm going to take over that same ministry. Like God just took the opportunity to go into the promised land away from Moses. And now I'm going to move into this role where people are angry and upset. And and how am I going to do that? And then at the same time, Joshua is being told that God will never leave nor forsake him. Yet at times in the desert, might have felt like God had left. Yet this promise is made. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. You know, I think sometimes we find ourselves in this place. Sometimes we have Joshua moments in our life. 
in these moments, it seems like maybe this promise has been forgotten. You know, God says he's not going to abandon us. He says he's never going to forsake us. But, but God, why am I going through this then? Why am I walking through this storm? And at times in our life, it feels like God has abandoned us. But friends, today I'm here to tell you that you are not abandoned and you are not forsaken. This is the promise of God that you are not alone. It's also the title of the sermon today. So there you go. Good segue. You are not alone. So I want us to look today at God's word. And I think there's three promises that God makes that speak to this bigger promise that you are not alone. So what are these promises? Number one, the promise of the word. You know, we hear the word, and I think a lot of us, our minds go instantly to the Bible, right? Maybe you have a digital Bible like I've got here. Maybe you've got your paper Bible. Um, I am a fan of the paper Bible, but, you know, hey, on the days where I preach, it's easier to have this thing in front. But we often think of the Word as a book, as the Bible, right? And, and rightfully so. And we hear that the Word then is alive and active, and we think, well, you know, how can a book be alive? But John chapter 1 reveals a very different understanding of the Word. And I want you to hear this. John chapter 1, verse 1 through 4 says this, In the beginning was the Word. Huh. And the word was with God. Okay. And the word was God. Okay. What's going on here? Verse 2. He was with God in the beginning. He. Hmm. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing has, was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. John refers to the word as him. Through him. Through the word. All things were made. The word is God. John chapter 1 verse 14 then says, The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen the glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. You see in this text, John reveals an incredibly important truth to us, an incredibly important promise to us. The word is the son of God, it's Jesus. The word became flesh, became human, and made his dwelling amongst humanity. God himself became man and dwelled among us. The word is, was, and always will be Jesus Christ. And we have been given the promise that Jesus came and established his kingdom here on earth. It is a spiritual kingdom, and ultimately it, he, the word, brings life through his death and resurrection. So how do we know we aren't alone? We have the promise of the word, the words of God, yes, in scripture, but the word that became flesh, which is Jesus Christ, the promise of the gospel. You see, it's easy to feel like God has abandoned us, like he's forsaken us, like he's not looking out for us. But just a few weeks ago, we talked about the prodigal son, and we know that God, while we were still a long way off, God saw us lost, broken, in our sin. And what did he do? He made a way for us. The word became flesh. And the word brings life. We are not alone because Jesus was given as a sacrifice. We know that God did not leave us in our sin. He did not abandon us. He did not forsake us. He made a way, and while we were a long way off, he saw us and sent Jesus. And what a promise for us today that Jesus came for us before we were ever born, before we were ever here Before our time, Jesus came to forgive us today. That's how much God loves you. Before you had a chance to do anything in your life, Jesus came. You have the promise of the word. You are not alone because we have the promise of the word. The second thing, we have the promise of prayer. And we can take hope in in, in the promise that we aren't alone because God has promised throughout scripture to hear us. 
And we see uh, several examples here. Isaiah 65, 24, before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. Matthew 7, 7, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. In 1 John 5, 14 through 15, this is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. These are incredible promises in scripture, and they should be a great source of encouragement to us. But you know what? I want to be honest for a moment. I want to give some insight because, you know, you might be thinking today, well, you know, I've prayed. You know, I prayed, and, and, and we're hearing, well, ask and it will be given, right? And I have prayed. I have prayed for that job. I have prayed for my family member who is sick. I've prayed against COVID-19, and God did nothing. So how does God hear prayer? How can I trust these promises? <laughs> That's garbage. Maybe some of you feel that way today. I've been there. I've had these moments. But let's look again at this verse. 1 John chapter 5, it says, If we ask anything, this is the key part, according to his will. See, we love the last part. We know that we have what we asked of him. Ooh, that's good. I like that. I'm just going to read that and take that home with me today because, man, that sounds great. I'm going to pray for that Ferrari, and, man, God's going to hear me, and it's going to be in my parking lot when I go home today. Or maybe you're in your living room today, and you're, you're like, I'm going to pray right now, and there's going to be a Ferrari in my driveway. I'm going to pray for this new house, and God's going to hear me. I'm going to pray for this job, and God will hear me. I'm going to pray that my mother won't die of cancer. And he will hear me. But then suddenly those things we pray for, those prayers, they're not answered the way we want it. Suddenly that job isn't there. And suddenly that person is still sick. Suddenly COVID-19 hasn't disappeared. We think, well, why? God, you have made me this promise. Why haven't you heard my prayer? But you know what? We need to take a step back today. And we need to think, if the God of the universe, I want you to hear me today, because this is hard, okay? This is hard for us. But I need you to hear me. If the God of the universe, the one who gave us breath, doesn't answer our prayer the way we want, then I'm going to guess that there's probably a good reason. See, I know I do this all the time. We often think we know what is best for our lives, right? I mean, it's like my life, so obviously I know what's best for me. So obviously I'm only going to pray for the things that are best for me. But we think that and we forget that God is the author and perfecter of our faith. He is the one with the plan that truly matters, and he answers our prayers according to his will. And what is God's will? It is simply this. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, God wants all people to be saved and to come into a life-saving knowledge of the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is God's will for you. It is God's will for me. It's God's will for everybody who's sitting in here and filming and uh, in the tech booth. That is God's will that we would all know the truth of Jesus Christ. You see, even though we have other challenges in our life, there are other problems that we're facing. God knows that the single greatest challenge that you will ever face in your life is sin. That is the greatest problem that you face because there is nothing you can do to escape your sin. Nothing. God knows this. He knows That the most important thing for us and for others around us is that we enter into a life-saving understanding of the truth of Jesus Christ. And you know what? In light of the problems and the challenges and the difficulties we face in our life, this might not seem like a great promise. You might be sitting here and saying, well, I know Jesus. 
I still want my mom to be healed. I know Jesus. I still want COVID-19 to go away. How is that not good? Come on. How is that not what's best? But friends, we need to trust in the Lord. We need to trust in the Lord. And I'm saying it to myself today because there are things in my own life that I'm thinking about, even as I bring this word this morning, that I need to trust in the Lord. Romans 8, cha- chapter 8, verse 22 says this, and we know that in all things, all things, there's not an asterisk there. There's not like a little note at the bottom that says, well, most things. We said all, but it meant most things. No, in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And you know what? I realize even in my own life, I would much rather pray and have God respond to my prayers according to his will for my life than my own. Because sometimes my will and what I think is best is actually not what's best for my life or the lives of those around me. Remember that God doesn't just love you. He loves all. He wants all to come into a life-saving understanding of the truth of Jesus Christ. This might seem like a promise that doesn't bring a whole lot of comfort. But friends, today, I hope we can realize that our sin damages our ability to truly understand what's best for our life and what's best for the lives of those around us. And I didn't write this down, but I'm going to say it today. You know, I think so often we think the best thing in our life, and this is going to be a hard, this is going to be a hard moment for us. But I think some of us think the best thing in our life is for that person who's suffering and dying a terrible death of cancer. We think the best thing for them is that God would heal them and that they would stay with us. But this life pales in comparison to what God has for us, to what's in store. And friends, I don't say that because I want you to give up hope on this life. That is not what this message is about. Because you have been placed into this world. You've been placed into your family. You've been placed in your situation. You've been placed in that difficult situation for a reason. To be a witness. So that all might come to a life-saving understanding of the truth of Jesus Christ. And so, you know, think about that. I, I, you know, I've had so many moments in my life where, God, where are you in this? Where are you? But then, a week, a month, maybe even years down the line, and I'm thinking of a few right now, moments where in the pain, and in the trial, and in the circumstance, in the hurt, I thought God had left me. I had a Joshua moment where I said, I don't want this. God, why? Why have you abandoned me? But now today I look back and I see God's hand in all of it. God's hand guiding and moving. See, God never abandoned me in those moments and he hasn't abandoned you in your moment right now. He hears you and he is working in your life. And I hope you can find peace and rest today in the promise of Isaiah when he says, before they call, this is God, before you even pray, he will answer. While you're still speaking, he will hear. Rest in the fact that God hears your prayers. Not only does he hear your prayers, but he knows what's best for your life. Look no further than Moses. Moses wandered that desert And I'm sure there were opportunities for him. There there are plenty of examples in scripture where we see just what is going on. And Moses probably thought at moments that God has forsaken or abandoned. He chose the wrong person. I shouldn't be here right now. But God used him in a mighty way. And he ultimately uses Joshua in their obedience, in their clinging to God. He uses them for the good of the people of Israel and ultimately for our good today. As we cling 
to Jesus. As we cling to God, we bring our prayers, bring our petitions to him, and allow him to work out what's best for our lives. Pray in all circumstances. Prayer is proof that you are not alone. And the third thing that God has promised us is that there is a kingdom here that we are now a part of us. In this text uh, from 1 John, we saw the word became flesh and dwelt among us, made his dwelling among us. But this wasn't a one-off event that has no impact on our lives today. You see, when Jesus came, he may not have, you know, come to dominate the world and establish this worldly kingdom like we might think that he should have. No, he came and he established his spiritual kingdom here on earth. He established victory over sin and death. And we know this because in Mark chapter 1, 15, we read the words of Christ himself. It says, the time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. When Jesus came, he broke the chains of our sin. And he established his heavenly kingdom here on earth. It's a spiritual kingdom. But those who believe, we who believe are now members of that kingdom. You can rest in that assurance. But the kingdom of God is also tangible. You see, it's a community that we can actually actively participate in. It's the church. It's the body of Christ. And you are actively participating in it today. In your living room, maybe you got a coffee mug in your hand. You think, what? I'm participating in the body. Yes, you are part of the kingdom of God right now. You are part of our church family, whether it's there or the few people that are here with us today, you are participating in the kingdom of God. You see, in the church, we can support one another. In the church, we can build one another up. In the church, we encourage and we, we, we walk with each other through our trials. And that's why in Hebrews Chapter 10, 24 through 25, which, which we said this morning in our prayer. I didn't even realize I'm, I'm using this text in my sermon. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Here we go. Not giving up, meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. We weren't meant to walk through life alone. We were meant to be together as a Christian community, to support one another, you know, to care for one another, to pray for one another, to stand firm with one another in the trials and to spur one another on towards good good deeds. And this is why, you know, it breaks my heart to see people run from the church. We see it all the time. But the reality is we are all sinful And the church, even though it's the body of Christ, even though it's the the kingdom of God here on earth, we're still sinners. We're forgiven because of Jesus, but we are still sinful in our flesh. And the reality is that we hurt one another. We are a family. If any of you are part of a family, you know that sometimes families get into arguments. Sometimes they hurt one another. But I want to urge you today, please don't give up on the body of Christ. Don't give up on the church. Don't give up on the kingdom of God because someone has a different view. Don't give up on the church because someone voted differently. Don't give up on the church because someone posted something on social media that you don't like. Instead, let us not give up meeting together as the Bible tells us. Let's encourage one another. And look, you know, many of you watching online, you might be, you know, wondering, well, I, you know, I want to join a church after this pandemic. And look, we would love to have you here at Cross Point. Maybe you've never been here in person. I'll tell you what, there is a place for you. And when we open these doors, you are absolutely 110% invited to come and join us. Can I get an amen from all the people here? Are they invited today? Amen. You are invited to join us. But I'll tell you what, this isn't, for cross point to grow this is so that the kingdom of god may grow and look maybe cross point's not the place for you but today i want to urge you if you're looking for a church home find one don't wait don't stay at home and i understand right now you're staying at home cuz cuz of covid-19 i completely understand that but when this thing is passed and it will find a church home you're welcome to come here but you know what find a scripturally rooted god-fearing church and join.
become part of the kingdom of God. Don't wait any longer. You know, I think my, my generation, I'm going to just speak to the millennials right now, particularly. We've decided that church doesn't matter. We have devalued church. We've said, yeah, I don't need church. You know, it's my faith. It's my journey. It's my walk with God. Why do I need a church? I got my Bible. I never open it, but I got my Bible. I pray once a year. I think about God when I need him. We've devalued church, particularly in my generation. We've decided it's not for us. But I want to speak to the millennials right now particularly because we are raising a generation without God. And I have, I have three kids right now. And I want my kids to grow up and know that they are fearfully and wonderfully made, that not only do mom and dad love them more than they could ever know, but Jesus Christ loves them so much that he came 2,000 plus years ago to die on a cross so that they might have eternal life. And if you're a millennial today and you're watching this and you're not teaching your kids these things, then what are you doing? What are you doing? You're setting your kids up to wander through life with no hope. And maybe this is hard. Maybe you're angry at me right now for saying this but you should feel some guilt because it's time for my generation to stand up and to raise our children in Jesus Christ and in a knowledge of the truth. We need to step up. We need to step up. And I think for us in the church, what, you know, we face those moments where we're hurt and I understand that. But if we, what if we took the time to forgive rather than to run? What if we took the time to understand rather than undermine? What if we took the time to love instead of reject and gossip and talk about people behind their back? We talk, took the time to truly be a family. And Carrie said something incredible this week. I loved it. Jesus won by losing. <laughs> what an incredible thought. Jesus, the savior of the universe. Maybe we should do a series on this, Carrie and Pastor. We'll talk about it. The savior of the world won by dying. That's how he conquered sin and death, by dying on the cross for us. Jesus won by losing. And you know what, friends? Some of us are running from the church because of our own pride. Some of us are running from the church because we believe someone else has done something or the church didn't quite meet their standards or the church, you know, didn't greet them the right way or the church didn't call me enough. And we have decided that we don't want to be a part of that community anymore. That breaks my heart. It truly does. We are all sinful. You will never find the perfect church, but you know what? It doesn't mean you shouldn't join the community of God. And the second part of this promise is the Holy Spirit, and we'll just go through this real quick. John chapter 7, verse 37 through 39 says, On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. And by this, he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Those who believe in Jesus Christ have received the Holy Spirit. And if you believe in Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit. He's your advocate. And he speaks to us through the word, through the scriptures. So friends, today, if you're wondering, well, where is the Holy Spirit in my life? Open your Bible. Because the Holy Spirit has inspired the words within that Bible. So God's words allow the Holy Spirit to penetrate you and to enter into your life. And so we began today with the passing of the baton from Moses to Joshua. And we kind of pondered what it might feel like to be Joshua in this moment. All of the trials and tribulations that Moses had endured. And now he has to step into that place but you know what? I think Joshua saw something else in Moses. He saw a man of God who, in spite of the trials, in spite of the difficulties, clung to God. 
and said at times probably, I have no clue what you are doing, God. This feels like a giant mistake, but I'm going to trust in you. And that's what Joshua saw in his life. That's the example that Joshua followed. And he clung to God, and ultimately God moved through this. You know, I've had Joshua moments in my life where I have just wondered, well, what is this thing that God is asking me to do right now? Why, why am I in this moment? And, and I want to speak to you today. You know, I think a lot of us, particularly at home right now, we're thinking, well, why am I at home right now instead of church? Like, this stinks. You know, I think it all the time. I don't like being at home for church. I like being here with my church family. We walk through these moments in life, these trials and these difficulties, and we feel like God isn't present. And in my life, mine and Jess's life, we've walked through several losses, four miscarriages. Many of you know this. You know, it hasn't been sunshine and rainbows in our life. There's been difficult Moments, times of loss, challenge. And then at 20 weeks with our youngest son, we were told that, you know, because of some issues with some testing, that, uh, that he may not even survive. And after four miscarriages, I remember sitting in that doctor's office and thinking, why? Why God? And at that time, I was, I was getting ready to go to seminary. I was like, I'm doing everything right, God. Why? Why have you left me, God? We have these moments in our life where we feel like we've been abandoned. I'll tell you what. Three years later, my wife's sitting right over there, our little Jackson. That kid's crazy. I love him. He was born with upside-down feet. And I mean that, I'm not joking. His feet were literally upside down and there were some other things, but you know what? Today, praise God, he is healthy. God never abandoned us. He never left us. He's never left you. He never will. He loves you. Friends, he loves you more than you will ever know. You are not alone. God is with you. And we want to be with you as a church. We want to walk through the storms in your life with you. I want to tell you today that we are here for you. If you need prayer, if you need anything, please reach out to us. We, we can help in any way we can, but we don't know what you're going through until you tell us. Some people think we just should know, and that's really difficult. <laughs> But if you're walking through a, a difficult time right now, don't be afraid to come to us. We'll walk through that with you, as the church was always meant to. You are not alone. And that's God's promise for you today. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this incredible promise that in the midst of difficult moments, in the midst of trials, in the midst of storms, that we have not been abandoned and we have not been forsaken. And that you love us. And you sent Jesus for us and ultimately established your kingdom here on earth that we now get to be a part of. So we thank you for that. And we pray that you would remind each and every person who's hearing this message that they are not alone. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, wherever you are, go ahead and stand. If, even if you're in your living room, stand with me today as we receive the blessing of the Lord. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you to the team who's here today. And thank you for tuning in to Crosspoint Online. I, I can't tell you how much we miss you, but we love that we can worship with you in this way. Have an awesome week. God bless. Thanks for tuning in to Crosspoint Church Online. 
make sure you submit your prayer request to crosspointelpaso.com slash pray, because we are praying for you. You can also submit your tithes and offering on crosspointelpaso.com slash give. We love you guys. We miss you so much. Have a blessed rest of your day.